Welcome to Greenwich Valley. I am the Family Farmer, and this is episode 1.5. Come on, let's hang out for a while. And welcome to the vlog. So, probably the last time any of you probably have seen anything here at Greenwich Valley, things have been a whole lot different. If you all remember, the great Mr. Seely P was here and had an audit going on. And he was auditing a bunch of the local farmers. Well, well things have really changed since Mr. Zilly P has left. Things have really changed since Mr. Zilly P has left. Um, you know, most, if not all, of the farmers have moved out. And the difference is some local uh, Guys. corporate developers have tried to come in to take over the area. So they have tasked me, the family farmer, that's what I'm kind of known as, to come in and uh, kind of redevelop the area to agricultural. So let's kind of take a look at the PDA to start out with. And I'll kind of show you what's going on here. So this is where I'm at, of course. This is the farm. They've given me 32, 33, 41, 42, uh, 43, plus, now, also, I had purchased the sheep farm over here, and that comes with two grass pastures, 35 and 36. So, right now, we are on day two, mid-spring. Um, we have got a lot of work to do, everyone. Uh, we have not done any work to the fields, as you can see. Nothing's going on. So we have got a lot to do. Well, let's take a look at the seasons menu here. Daddy, Daddy, you have pets. So here, as you can see now, my my seasons geo is southern Alberta. In and so, early spring, nothing can really be planted. There's no window for really anything. But as you can see, in mid-spring here, and I play on three-day seasons, by the way, mid-spring and on, it's really full force. Everything is ready to go to be planted. Harvest season, kind of till winter. Now, it's going to get quite some cold winters here, some cold brutal winters. So we're going to have to do some preparation ahead of time to, uh, to plan these out. So let's take a look right now, guys, what I'm kind of working with. So you've probably seen the gator back there by the house. This is the Great Plains planter. This thing's nice. It's 12 meter. A little big maybe for the map, but... I think we can get her to work just fine, no problems. But the thing is, is this is a direct drill planter. Plus, it can do all the crops. Anything from the root crops to the cereal crops, corn, soybeans, everything in between. Over in here, a little bit of extra seed and fertilizer there. In case you're wondering, this is the the big bag XXL. Instead of the typical 2,000 liters, these are 4,000 liter bags. Uh, that's what we usually go for. The problem is now, just a word of warning for all of you who uh, decide to go with these. The fertilizer ones here are extremely heavy. So you want to make sure you have like a nice weight on the back end when lifting these bags. Because otherwise it just really drags down the machinery. We have the Rustal Mesh Harvester. That is a nice little piece of equipment right there. Headers here in around the corner. This is the buy silo where by CNS Modding, I believe. This thing does seed and fertilizer and herbicide, I believe. Don't put me on that one, folks. <coughs> mm, coughing fit that moment. Grab a quick sip. All right. So what's nice about these is this is so cheap. I know I use this on another map and like fertilizer. Hi. 
would literally cost me about two hundred dollars, I would say, and instead of the normal like two thousand dollars. So yeah, beautiful there. I have no problem going with that. Add the grain truck in here. This is the Lizard Yams 238. I always use this one if I can. I love the grain trucks. Especially on a map like this, guys. It's uh, They can get in and out of a lot of tighter areas a lot quicker. So I always tend to go with that if possible. We got the Cavernland. We got the Cavernland uh, spreader here. Well, uh, this is the, the Geo Guy. spread. This can go, uh, you probably all know right now, it's coming from the Converland pack. And uh, this has up to a 45 meter spread, so, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I usually use that one about every time. There's, I usually never go back. And of course, guys, this tractor is my go-to tractor. Hey, y'all, in the comments, let me know what your guys' favorite go-to tractors. You know, I'm always kind of curious what everybody else likes. This one's mine. This is the JCB Fast Track 8000. I got the big motor in it. So this one goes like 320 horsepower. Beautiful piece of machinery. It goes like 45 miles an hour. I go with it every time. Got the John Deere Batwing mower. Six meter. No problem there. I love this little mower. It only takes like 50 horsepower to pull it too, so... Y'all are using like smaller tractors, you know, that's a beautiful piece of machinery. This thing, this is a little beauty here. This is the Case Rambler. And this is a little cultivator. Now this is 10 meters for only like 10 grand. So cheap as anything. We got the Case uh, Forage Wagon here, Quantum. Beautiful little thing. This is the Pottinger uh, wind rower, uh, six meter there. All right, so let's talk a little bit, folks. Oh, I got a little car trailer here, just in case we got to haul anything from the shop. Shop is quite a distance. So let's go jump in the gator and head over to the, the treat farm. And I'll kind of give you guys a little look at what's going on there. You can kind of see, don't mind the bad driving by the way. You can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Mr. CVP came in and he really turned things around here, but it kind of seemed like that once Mr. CVP kind of took off in the area that gave her the open. Alright, we're at the seat farm. Alright. So, they had given us some sheep now to kind of go on with it. I believe there are 200 here. And as you can see, we have a lot of wool already that needs to be picked up. So that will be part of the daily job too. So, host the water tanker. This is the 18,000 liter one. Alright, let's we'll take a look around here. There's the gator. And we got the K. the Quas uh, Baylor. This is the Wallet G50. Uh, the ground Baylor. Might need it, might not. I'm really kind of in the air right now, guys. What to do with the grass bales? So, let's kind of let me know. This little baleist we just collected by storage wise. So, oh, got the old Zeter in here. I think that'll be a good, like, tractor to keep around the farm to use for, like, uh, the work around the farm here. We have a front loader here with the big bag handler from the CSE pack. Workshop, of course. Another little trailer. This one has straps. It's a nice little uh, bail trailer or a storage trailer, kind of whatever you need in there. So, yeah, definitely lots to be done. Now, let's take a look here while we're here. And see if that grass on these fields over here are ready to be picked up. We got a couple of things to pick up at the shop too. So, oh yeah, look at that, ready to harvest. Nothing on them, so our yields might not be so hot. 
so that could be a thing. Now, at least with grass, we're gonna have time. As long as I don't cut it. As you know, folks, if you're playing Seasons, once you cut the grass but don't pick it up right away, it has a chance to turn it into hay. So, yeah, that'll definitely be something we're gonna have to mess with. Alright, guys, I think right now, nothing like the present. Let's get to work, huh? So I think what we'll do first here, since we're already over here, let's go. Alright, we got all the birds picked up there. I went ahead while I was doing that, I went ahead and picked up a shovel and went in and went and cleaned up the feed trough for the sheep, so that's all complete now. If we look in our seasons menu here, under animals. There's already a thousand liters of wool. It's ready to be picked up already, so moving right along. Everything is fine. Grass, water, the cleanliness will reset. It takes a little bit always, as you all know. Water and grass and hay, that will be fine for now. It should give us time to at least get more grass cut, so we'll go with that for now. So let's go ahead and head back to the other farm. I think right now, probably the best thing we probably get started from that field work. As we drag him back over, as you know, I am taking over from the CBD auditing services and uh, trying to keep this with sustainable agriculture. A lot of uh, of a really uh, good, solid uh, agriculture that can be used over here, and so we have to be able to show the communities around here that we uh, can still provide for them, you know, so. I also want to uh, just uh, guide everyone here, kind of driving back over. A very, very big thank you to Mr. Silver here for allowing me to use his name the right name. Videos. Much appreciate you, sir. If you're watching, I'm hoping you're checking it out. Alright. Maybe I'm not for sure right now. This is our closest town to us. This is the town of Whitney over here. Now they're kind of smaller, kind of a uh, uh, farm town, I guess you would say. So. City, Farm Craig is what it's uh, what it's called. It's a few kilometers away from us, so that is no certain I understand where these big developers are coming out of trying to up with that. So yeah, you know, we got, you know, a short time pretty much to kind of uh, show them that we can uh, come in and keep their green going to float now. Alright, there we are with that. So, I think we're definitely going to get some straw off of one of these fields. Let's go ahead and get these opened up over here. So they're ready to go. Alright, so I think we'll go ahead and we'll put wheat in this first one. Check out our seasons menu to make sure. And as you can see, we can do wheat, barley, and oats. We can also do canola and sunflower. Now, sunflower might be a good one to put in. We're too early for soybeans and corn. Ground temp has to come up anyway. That's about the only thing. Looks like oilseed radish would be, which if you guys all did know, that is just a fertilizer pretty much. You'd plow it in after it grows and then be ready for your next state, so... Of course, grass that's ready to go at this point, and then poplars we could do too. We probably won't mess too much with poplars though, so yeah, let's go ahead and get some wheat going. That'll be the best thing. 
supposed to be Jason Bean. This is a great place to plant for. I was looking at it as we go into the menu here under cedars. Just kind of show you all what I'm thinking. Now, originally, I was maybe thinking like the horse pronto. It's a 9 meter, but I'm like, it's lots of horsepower. And then there's a Lemkin, too. A lot lower horsepower, only 150 required, and that's a 12 meter. Well, it was found to be quite bulky, too, so. That and it only does, doesn't do all the crops. Of course, you got the big ones here with the Borgot pack and things like that. This is from the Alpine Farming Pack. And this is only a three meter though, so I really wasn't thinking that direction. So, we get down here, I got the Cavernland pack. That's, that's a 12 meter. And then more of the horse stuff. And this is what I was originally thinking. This is the John Deere 8350, only 60 horsepower to pull it. It's a direct drill, but only does the cereal crops. So I got to thinking, well, what about planters? And then that's what got me thinking, that's right, you know, we got the Great Plains one here. That's the bigger version, of course, but the YP4025A. And I'm like, that's right, that does all the crops, plus it's a direct drill. It's like a 4,400. Now there's also like the this horse, the John Deere one. It just does the 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 planting crops, the corn and sunflower, soybean. And that's the newest one I just uh, brought down. It's also a direct drill, seven and a half meters. So it's not a bad one. So, but in the end, I thought this was the best choice. Right to this map. So, zoom out here a bit so we can see what's going on. Get everything unfolded. Alright, off we go. Working out beautifully. And you guys are probably going to ask me, well, why didn't you ask for the life of the And I've always done it this way. Sometimes I go and then I can't drive, but hey, it's not that hard. Now, sometimes I will fertilize and seed at the same time. Typically, I'll go back through after I seed. And then lay down my first round of fertilizer. But typically, though, all right, so even though I have no major, typically I do my harvest and then do my and then cultivate, fertilize then, and then seed, and then add my second round of fertilizer, and then I'll first grow, add my final round to get that full 100% yield. Since we're just trying to get our first cuts in the ground so we can get something growing to have something by the fall to be harvesting. The worst thing you can do is this one. You could direct drill, get some crops going. We can always come to and fertilize. And once I found the fertilizer stuff. Well. And with 12 meters we're gonna go quite quickly anyway, so these drills really are not that good. So. Might do actually we can save or kind of do these fields for corn corn and soybeans or sunflowers at least. Corn and sunflowers. And now we're gonna have those. If those are a late spring crop that we can plant. So yeah, we might save a couple of the fields back wait till they spring to plant those. Yeah, so... I 
think after we get all the planting done, then we'll probably go on over and uh, hook up the mower and uh, get some mowing done. Get that. Um, I don't think I should do all that. Uh, I use on the multi hit silos and just kind of set it up uh, next to one of my fields over here. And the nice thing about that is that it holds literally everything a person could think of. Grass, human meter, just worry. And it can hold it. If I was that, nothing else would be perfect just for the grass thing. Otherwise, you know, like we all know, console players, we have to worry about if we do bail. We have to worry about bail limits. We only allowed it to look 200 bails. So, like, without having to run into all that, they having to buy extra equipment to hold the bales and all that. I think that this will be about perfect, so. So, let's go ahead and we'll do, like, a, a loose pickup of it, put it in bulk. And then put it in storage and hold, so... What you guys will probably find as we get deeper into this series... That I might... Yeah, I might bother some of you all, you know. Definitely might... I might not like how I do some of my planting. So I'm definitely, but I'm not, I'm not in the purest group. I will not be the first one to admit that now, and I'm alright with that, you know. I'm the have fun and enjoy it group, you know. <laughs> Let me give a big shout out to my boy DJ Johan. He has this video out there you also need to check out. For the, the Fast Farm. Fast Farm has been my best friend since it came out, and so I use it whenever I can. So pretty much what it is, if you have a participating equipment. And with that, it really doesn't say... Let me go ahead and do it like this, get a strip and come back and get it. It doesn't say the one that does Fast Farm, but... And that's what it is, is you get your physical equipment, and then you hit left bumper, and then X twice, really fast. Is the appearance. And as you can see, this may not be a participating piece of equipment, so. Normally that's what you do, and then it would go pretty much the speed of the tractor. So in this case, if I had the equipment, then we could go up to 45 miles per hour, which is crazy fast. But this works just fine. So we can do it there. As you can see, we're over halfway done to build already. Especially only being a little before nine in the morning at this point. I think what we might have to do is when we get some money going, is a few previous owners of this place in the silo. It's a bunch of crops stored in there. So I think what we're gonna have to do is probably I might do it off camera too, you guys, just to save you all the agony of watching me go back and forth to sell places. Uh, sell all the crops. And, uh, get some money rolling in here. Especially, we're going to have a few months before we're going to have any crops coming in. So, 
Yeah, it's probably what I might have to do. Well, you know, we also do have the four towers to hold, so... If we need... We could always sell the gold towers on shore. Okay, there's going to be spawning them in a terrible way, it seems. So... So that's definitely a possibility. Yeah, you know, just some things to think about as we go forward here. Alright, a couple more strips, and this one will be done. Just a little bit here, no big deal. Yes, I know, go look. You're not definitely not going to want to watch me fight the field ball. Yes, I do overlap. Do it quite frequently. I find it better for my sanity, I guess you could say, to uh, overlap my weapons. Yes, I know the argument then goes out there that I'm wasting seed and just in the real world that I've been wasting money. But, you know, as we just spoke of a little bit ago, I'm definitely not in that purest category, so. A little bit of wasted seed is really no bother to me at all. So. Alright, one more time now. Just going. Nope, one more spot. Alright, there we go. Alright, right. looking good. So, the rest of the fields I might do off camera. Like I said, we're going to be seeing it, so... I'm not sure if you want to see the rest of it. But I would probably save a couple of fields back for our late season, late spring crops. Let's take a look at the season spring view one more time, and then I can show you what I mean. So, Sunflowers and soybeans. Oh, sunflowers is good. Yeah, I'm in the wrong spot. Soybeans and corn are the late spring ones. So, as you all know, soy soybeans is definitely the money maker. So, definitely we're going to have to get more field left behind. I'm thinking the one behind me here. I think 33 might be perfect for that one. Yeah, I'm up here real quick. Alright. This one, yeah. It's kind of a nice bigger field, so I think this one would be perfect for a soybean field. So... If I get time before the late spring comes, I might come in and cultivate it up and fertilize it, but I won't drag you guys through all that. Oh, yeah. Well, right now we've got 41, 42, and then was it 43? Let's get over here, walk over here. Yeah, there's a silo right there. There's a bunch of crops stored in it, so. Like I was saying a little bit ago, I think it might be perfect, yeah. Got these two over here. I guess we could do oats in there. That's one of them crops definitely for these little towns around here. I'm sure they can use quite a bit of to get going with, so. But yeah. And this is 40, 31, okay. So a little bit close. Your B&B, you know, this house there, another one, another group right there, guys, that for sale, it's like, what has happened, you know, what kind of went down, you know, in the past few months or whatever, the old B&B where, you know, CLP done all of his stays at, you know, while he was working out this way. So, like I said before, this is that multi-fruit silo. 
This holds an insane amount too. I think it's something like 10 million liters that'll hold. So, oh my god, this would be perfect right here. And this is our field. Now this is quite a large field too, actually. So, I think, and this will be a corn field. So yeah, we'll of course have to get a corn header at some point for that one. So, but yeah, I think we'll save that one for the corn. And then that other one we will save for we'll save for the uh, for the soybeans. So that means we got two more here to do. And let's see. Let's take a look what we should put in there. I don't know. I find them to be potatoes and sugar beets kind of a pain because you gotta have the specialized equipment to get it out. Um, we don't do sugar cane out here. Cotton can be done, but it's very sporadic. It's a midsummer plant. And then harvest is like in a short window and in late fall. And then of course you got the cold start to set in about that time too, so it's careful. But yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll probably go ahead and put barley and oats over here in these two. As that's probably going to be the best suggestion. Nothing else just to get going. Both of these fields were fallow before, so. So we'll go ahead and do that. Once again, that'll probably be, I'll probably go ahead and do all that off camera just to spare you the boredom of that. So, for now, let's go ahead and get this parked off to the side for the moment. Pick up the mower. Thirty-five. Most got thirty-six.
It's one of the two things when we talk about large tractors. I think they're all together. It's like 245, 245,000. So, yeah. You look at comparatively, some of the larger tractors, they're like 500,000. You know, so, same horsepower or less, you know, so. That was tractor driving with the flat option, seems like it just pulls, it just pulls more, you know, out of situation. You know, it pulls some of your equipment up like the hills and things like that. This seems to have the power. Another fact I really noticed that, Kind of an exciting thing. Just coming back, that little massive 135. I just got a little tractor, you know. I don't think it's all 45 horsepower, I think it's all I think can do. That thing is just a little more close. So, yeah, it's like. Uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be one of my go to tractors for small sort of now farms. That one many times. That little 135 is holds a lot. So it's not for it's really work for a step, but that I mean, you may know if you watched uh you watched Dagobin in his work play series. I think he was doing uh wet and farms. He used that 135 like all the time on that map. And it's just fantastic, so it's like that uh I don't know if that farm and everything that I see in that from back here, so quite nice. All of you were pretty excited, from what I understand, for Charlington Valley. Yeah. Now, from what I understand from watching a couple of the other guys talk about the Giants release on it, that it's back to Giants today for testing. I don't know if it would be on January the 13th, 2021, so, you know, I understand it's like a few days technically and currently for the mod to be submitted, so, I can imagine, I bet you any money by early next week, once the players were going to have Challenge and Valley out in Congress, too. You see the least risk of any so. I almost guarantee you're going to be seeing the console version very, very quickly. Oxygen data has never failed us when it comes to uh, conservation of maps, so we're going to expect this one to be really different whatsoever, so. Alright, so I'm going to get this one done and go ahead and get the other metal done. And then I will meet you guys back here when I'm ready to do some more drilling. Alright everyone, I'd like to let you up for this time. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you follow and share with your friends. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon.